hi guys and welcome to this week's video. This week's video is extra fun and exciting. It's um, a cheap art supply challenge. I've got a few uh, different cheap art supplies here which we'll take a look at first and then I'll produce something with one of these products. So first off we have this 12 set of colour pencils. They cost 21 Norwegian Krona which is about $2. Um, and they don't look too bad. They look pretty good, I think, for what they cost. Next is a set of 12 acrylic paints. Um, they're quite small, just 12 millil milliliter tubes each, but there's a nice range of colors there, so we'll see what I can create with those. And to go with those paints, I also bought um, a few different canvases. So I bought these uh, ones that are about the same size as artist trading cards and they cost 3 Norwegian krona each, so something like 30 or 40 cents a piece, which I thought was very reasonable. Um, this 10 by 10 centimeter or I think 4 inch by 4 inch um, canvas, which cost 5 Norwegian krona, so about half a dollar. And these larger ones, which are 15 by 15 or 6 inches by 6 inches and they cost about a dollar each. So I'm really excited to try those out. I haven't tried acrylic painting for a while, so um, I'll see how I do with those. I also bought a couple of brushes and they were pretty reasonable as well. I think they were um, about seven kroner each, so 70 cents a piece. And the last thing that I bought were these um, felt tip pens. They appear to be brush nibbed and there are 18 different colours here, so a lovely selection of colours. And these were 33 Norwegian Krona, which is about three and a half dollars, I think. So I'm excited to use these. I'm interested to see how they perform and see what kind of techniques I can use with these pens. But today I'll be looking at these colour pencils and have a go with these and see what kind of art I can create with them. Um, I'd love to know what you think that I should use next, if I should use the acrylic paints or the fibre tip pens. You can vote on which one you'd like to see right now up here. But now I'm going to swatch these out and see what they're like and then think of something that I can draw with them. So now I'm swatching out these pencils. I think it's a really important thing to swatch out all of your new art supplies. And in this case, I'm particularly looking for transparency, um, the amount of pigment in the pencils, uh, how waxy they are as well is um, a really important thing to consider when um, drawing something, especially with cheap colour pencils, they tend to be a little bit on the waxier side, which might make them more difficult to layer. Straight off the bat, I was uh, really impressed with the amount of pigment these had. Um, they are very bright and vibrant, so um, I was really impressed considering I paid something like $2 for this set of pencils. Um, I think they couldn't really be better for their price. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but all of the art supplies that I just showed I bought from a shop called Sørstrøgrenner, which is a Danish shop, but it's an international shop, so um, check online. I'll leave a link to the uh, shop's website in the descri description box below and you can see if there is one near you. I've always loved this shop, they sell lots of different items um, including homeware and um, toys and things for framing photos and it's all really affordable so if you do live near one I really recommend that you pop in and have a look. So aside from using these pencils in the piece that I'm planning, I've also allowed myself to use items that um, I'd find around the home. So I used a sort of bog standard uh, mechanical pencil, it wasn't anything particularly special. And I also used a couple of ballpoint pens. I figured that most people have these, so um, they don't really cost anything because you already have them. And oftentimes you can find um, these kind of items as freebies at banks or whatever as well or through the mail so um, it's nothing that is particularly expensive and I expect that most people would have them anyway. I also used a pencil sharpener and an eraser again things that I sort of expect most people would have in their households. As for paper, uh, the paper that I'm using here to swatch out and to draw on is the same kind of paper. Um, it's the cheapest white paper that I have aside from printer paper and I think it's really important not to skimp out on um, on paper. I think that you can take a really cheap art supply and make something 
so much better than you would expect um, by just using better quality paper. So I sort of cheated in this respect. The um, plan really was to make the entire piece so that it would cost under $10 about. Um, but the pad of paper that I already had, um, I paid something like $13 for it. I think that these A5 sheets work out to be something like 20 cents each, which is okay, um, but once again I'm sure that you can find something cheaper if you look in your um, art shop. But seriously, I do want to reiterate that if you can't really afford anything in terms of nice art supplies, that I still recommend trying to find some um, better paper, something with a bit of texture to it something that is a little bit heavier than just standard print paper, you'll be able to get a lot more out of your supplies if you use a better quality paper. So now I'm beginning to draw out the subject matter with my mechanical pencil, and I found this a lot more difficult than I was expecting, I think because I'm used to drawing with um, colour now, with the Prismacolor Colour Race colour pencils, um, and I was really worried about the graphite muddying up the uh, colour pencils that I would use to colour this piece in. I'm not sure if you can tell quite yet, but I'm drawing a kingfisher. I wanted to draw something that had a large variety of colour in it, um, so that I could use um, as many colours as I possibly could, um, and I thought that a kingfisher was a perfect choice for this. I forgot to mention earlier that I also allowed myself to use a white Prismacolor um, colour pencil if in, ca in case I needed it, and I did end up needing it. Uh, I needed it to blend out some of the colours and to burnish the paper, otherwise I would have sat there for hours trying to um, flatten out the tooth of the paper. The paper that I'm using isn't very well suited for hard colour pencils. It's a um, paper designed for pastels, so it has a, a fair bit of texture to it, um, which would be quite easily filled with a softer pencil, but um, in this case I was really struggling to uh, fill the grain of the paper. So the white Prismacolor pencil came in handy in terms of pushing the pigment into the paper and uh, blending everything out. A Prismacolor white colour pencil doesn't set you back too much. I think I found it for $1.20 on Dick Blick or Jerry's Artarama, I can't remember which. Um, but you can buy them open stock, so I really recommend picking one up if you're buying cheap colour pencils. Um, most cheap sets of colour pencils don't contain a very good white, or if at all a white, because um, it's very difficult to create a very pigmented uh, colour pencil for a small amount of money. So in terms of the challenges that I faced when creating this piece, other than fighting the grain of the paper, uh, I really found it difficult to get nice crisp detail with these pencils um, alongside the paper. The pencils themselves are hard but also a little bit crumbly, so I couldn't get a fine point uh, I struggled particularly around the eyes and the beak, and this is where the ballpoint pens came in handy, so I could uh, really touch up those areas and try and create crisp edges. The other challenge that I faced was that these pencils hit wax bloom quite quickly, which meant that I couldn't build up extra layers and extra detail. The way that I usually use colour pencils is um, I usually block in values first and then build up detail later, but with these pencils um, that technique really didn't work at all. I think that if I'd spent longer than a couple of hours on this piece and slowly built up uh, areas by adding more and more detail rather than block in colour and then add detail over top, I would have gotten a better result, but I didn't really fancy spending probably upwards of 8 hours doing that. So instead I used the ballpoint pen later on to add in more detail. That being said, I didn't want to outline um, everything with black or blue, so I ended up just going for a soft... Um, more kind of loose feel in this bird. One of the areas that I struggled most with was the wings, or the wing I guess, because there's only one really that's showing. Um, there are little white spots on Kingfish's wings at the edges of each feather and I, there was no way that I could get those uh, white spots back in after I covered everything with blue, so I just sort of left them and as I said I just kind of went for a loose feel rather than a photorealistic sort of appearance. I think that the outcome still looks nice, but it wasn't what I was really expecting or had envisioned for the piece at the beginning of the sketch. I just wanted to quickly cover the differences that I find between um, a cheap art supply and a supply that's designed for artists. In my opinion, the most uh, important difference is light fastness, and this is the level of which a product fades over time when exposed to light. Also things like heat and humidity can change uh, the composition of a pigment. 
Artist grade supplies and some student grade supplies are formulated with light fastness in mind, um, so that means that they are going to withstand the test of time and they won't fade nearly as fast as a very cheap art supply would. I choose to use light fast supplies where possible because I'd be really upset if I found out that a piece of artwork that I'd sold somebody or somebody commissioned me to do faded over, um, say, a few years. And some cheap art supplies fade even faster than that. The second major difference I find is that an artist quality supply is designed with the artist in mind and the best possible experience that um, an artist would get whilst using that supply. There are quite a few factors to consider here, so um, the first one I can think of off the top of my head is the feel or lay down. For example, in a colour pencil, more expensive pencils tend to, or better quality pencils, tend to um, feel softer and more creamy. Whereas cheaper or lower quality pencils tend to have a harder, scratchier sensation when using them. This is also down to how much binder and pigment is used in the pencil. A manufacturer might design an artist's supply to blend as easily as possible, or just to lay down colour as easily as possible, for example. And these are the major differences that I experienced when using the cheap colour pencils compared to the pencils that I'm used to using. Because the pencils were a lot harder and had less pigment in them, they were a lot more difficult to blend, um, they were sort of chalkier feeling than the uh, Polychromos and Prismacolor pencils that I'm used to working with. And as a result, it took a lot longer to create this piece uh, using these pencils than it would have done if I had used my um, artist grade pencils. And I experienced more hand fatigue using these pencils than I do with my other colour pencils. I'd really love to draw another Kingfisher using my artist grade colour pencils, just as a comparison to uh, see what the differences are between these cheap pencils and um, some professional quality pencils. And maybe because I would really like to draw another Kingfisher. <laughs> So here's the final result and I'm fairly pleased with the outcome. The colours are nice and bright and vibrant. Unfortunately there's a little bit of wax bloom but that's sort of to be expected with um, a low quality colour pencil. Now that I better understand the limitations of this brand I think I'll give them another shot and draw some other little things with these pencils and I'll upload the photos of those to my social media so follow me there if you don't already. As I said in the beginning I'd love to know uh, what uh, cheap art supply you'd like to see me use next, either the uh, felt tip pens or the acrylic paints and you can vote for which one you'd like to see next using the poll up here. So I think that I succeeded with this challenge, the result is okay um, and I managed to complete this using supplies under $10. I think um, excluding the ballpoint pens and pencils and stuff, um, I spent the equivalent of around $4 20 or around $4 um, in total so that's pretty cheap and I think this demonstrates the purpose of this challenge quite well that you can still produce um, nice looking art with cheap supplies although it might be a little bit more difficult than using some higher quality supplies. So I'd love to hear about your experiences using cheap art supplies please leave me a comment down below. Leave this video a like if you found it interesting and helpful. Share it with your friends if you think that they'd like it too. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.